Hi, I'm Andrew Chen, tech lead for the vSphere Integrated Containers Appliance. Today I will demonstrate the installation of the Vic Appliance version 140. While this demo will be similar to the previous release, version 131, I will highlight some of the new features during the deployment. A separate video will highlight the improved upgrade process to version 140. Version 140 is the first version of the Vic Appliance that adds support for vSphere 6.7. I have downloaded the OVA for the Vic Appliance and will start its deployment using the Flex-based vSphere web client. The HTML5 client and the legacy Windows client are not supported for initial installation. Note that while an appliance deployed with the HTML5 client on vSphere 6.7 might appear to work, services running on the appliance will not function properly. Check the documentation for future updates on HTML5 client support for deploying the Vic appliance. After deployment, you may then use the HTML5 client with the Vic plugin to manage your vSphere integrated containers virtual container hosts. To deploy, select the OVA. Provide a VM name and data center or folder. And select the compute resource where the appliance will be run. Accept the license and select a data store. The Vic appliance requires a minimum of 80 gigabytes of storage with 20 gigabytes each for the system disk, logs, database, and application storage. The biggest consumer of storage on the Vic appliance is the container registry. If you plan to store more than 20 gigabytes of container images, the size of this disk can be increased. The other disks can also be resized according to your usage. Another consideration when selecting the data store is for future upgrades to the Vic appliance. The upgrade process requires deployment of the new Vic appliance. A data store in the same cluster needs to be able to accommodate the new appliance while the old appliance is still present during the upgrade process. Next, select a network. The Vic appliance has one network interface. This interface is used for both management and client traffic. For management traffic, the appliance needs to be able to communicate with the vCenter server and the PSC. The administrator also initializes the Vic appliance through a web interface on the appliance. For client traffic, users of the container registry and container management portal access these services running on the appliance. During the customization step, we can configure settings for the appliance. For this demo, I will use most of the default options and go over the other available deployment options. I will provide a custom TLS certificate for this install. If you want to have a basic installation suitable for demo or lab purposes, you may accept the defaults for all values and only provide a root password for the appliance. By default, the appliance uses DHCP to obtain network configuration and auto-generates a self-signed TLS certificate. Also note that SSH is enabled by default, as this is used for debugging and when upgrading the appliance in the future. To SSH to the appliance, use username root and the root password you set in the screen. Next, I will provide a custom TLS certificate by providing the certificate, key, and CA cert. A change from previous versions is that you only need to provide the TLS certificate once. It will then be used for all services running on the appliance. I have generated a CA, private key, and certificate here. Paste the PEM encoded values into the appropriate fields. Note that the value you paste for the certificate in section 1.3 will be presented to clients as is. If your TLS certificate requires an intermediate CA, you should concatenate the one or more CA certs with the server certificate to create the certificate chain before entering it in section 1.3. Note that while previous versions required a PKCS8 format private key, you may paste an unencrypted PEM encoded private key 
in either PKCS1 or PKCS8 format, and the appliance will automatically convert it to the correct format. To use a static IP address, provide the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS servers, domain search path, and fully qualified domain name of the appliance here. If these fields are left blank, DHCP will be used. For the container registry, you may configure the port that the registry and notary listen on. For the management portal, you may configure the port that the management portal listens on. Finally, example users are created in the platform services controller after the appliance is initialized. This allows for testing of the different personas that can access the container management portal and the container registry. You may uncheck the box to skip creation of these example users. Review the configuration and click finish to start deployment. The speed of your deployment will vary depending on your vSphere environment and network conditions. Once the deployment is complete, power on the appliance and wait for it to receive an IP address. Once it receives an IP address, you will see that the appliance is starting up by going to that address in the browser. The services on the VIC appliance will take several minutes to start. Since I generated my own CA and TLS certificate, a certificate error will appear. This will also appear when using certificates auto-generated by the VIC appliance. Add the root CA certificate to your operating system to eliminate these warnings. As we can see, the appliance is using the certificate provided during deployment and shows the full certificate chain. For users who wish to verify their connection to the VIC appliance, when a certificate warning is displayed, the SHA-1 fingerprint of the TLS certificate is displayed on the appliance console. Once appliance services are started, the appliance must be initialized through this modal on the Getting Started page. Enter the vCenter server location and administrator credentials. If using an external PSC, provide those details as well. When a green bar is displayed at the top of the Getting Started page, the appliance is successfully initialized. If a red bar is displayed, appliance initialization has failed. If the page is refreshed, the red bar will go away, but the appliance remains uninitialized. On the Getting Started page, there is a link to the VIC documentation. You may also download the files needed to deploy a VCH, contained in the vSphere Integrated Containers Engine bundle. Finally, there is a link to the Container Management Portal. After logging in, we can see that the Management Portal is running, but this is a fresh install, so there isn't anything populated yet. I will review some of the things you can do in the Management Portal. In this screen, you can create a project. Under Registries, by default, Docker Hub and the registry running on the appliance are added. Under Configuration, you can download the registry root certificate. This is needed by Docker clients to be able to connect to the registry if using auto-generated self-signed certificates or using other certificates that are not yet trusted by the client's operating system. Under Identity Management, Users and Groups, you can manage users' roles and see the default users that were created during deployment. Once you have a virtual container host deployed, you can add that here. This will enable deployment of containers to that VCH through the container screen. On the container screen, you can deploy containers by specifying the container image, container name, and the command to run. Thanks for watching, and you can find out more about vSphere Integrated Containers at github.com slash vmware slash vic dash product.